And so her name was Eva Dutro. And so someone gave her a call. And Eva immediately said, no, I don't have anything. When they kind of explained that, we, she says, I don't have any art. Um, and there's, there's, you know, this is not going to, you know, she wasn't too enthusiastic about it. Um, but it, through st talking to her for a while on the phone, they convinced her that, well, we needed to try this. And so she agreed that we could come the next morning. And so about three of us went to her place the next morning. Um, and we met in the kitchen. And we sat there and talked. And I looked around and I thought, hmm, this might be a little hard. Um, because right away she says, no, I don't have any art. And I looked around and I go, no, there really isn't much of any art here. <laughs> but um, but we, s we sat there and talked for a couple hours. And it was a wonderful, really wonderful conversation. Because she started talking about what life was like for her over the years, what, um, where she had grown up. And she had grown up on the other side of Haleakala, in a little Hawaiian village that no longer existed. And so um, she was telling about her life there. And it was just so wonderful to just hear her stories. And it was like, this is what this exhibit is all about. You know, it just it's the stories of the people. And so finally I said to her, I said, do you have anything, you know, that you you know, from when you were a little girl and lived in this Hawaiian village. And she says, yeah, she had something. And I said, well, what is it? And she says, oh, it's not important. And I said, well, could I see it? And she says, well, it's not here in the house. And I thought, hmm. And then, she says, it's outside. And you know that really got my curiosity. I said, could I go see it? She says, well, it's just a stone. And so then we went outside, and there was this, this stone that was sort of kind of rubbed uh, with a, an indentation in the ones on the top surface of it. We talked to her, and we said, well, tell us about the stone. And so she said, well, when she was growing up, there were many children in her parents' family family, and she was, I think, the oldest daughter or one of the older daughters. And so her j responsibility was to do the laundry each week or whenever it needed to be done. And so she would use this stone to wash the clothes on. And she said she felt that this was her way of helping her parents, you know, and this is the way their family lived. And she said, I, I ended up you know, leaving the village and um, marrying. And she says, after a number of years, or my husband, I was telling my husband about how I did the, you know, how we lived up in the village. And he says, well, let's go up there and see if we can find the village. And she says, well, it's no longer there. But he was determined, and he wanted to see where she had grown up. And so they. They uh, went up there and went hiking out into the spot where she thought the village existed. And eventually, they found foundations of some of the houses. And eventually, she, says she was able to determine a certain area where her family home was. But it was all grown over and very hard to see anything. And then all at once, as they were walking through this area, she saw this stone, and she she pointed it out to her husband, and he, and he says, well, it's just a stone. And she says, that's the stone I did the family's laundry on. And he, he's, he picked up the stone, and he says, we're taking it home. And she says, here it is. It's just here in the yard. And then she kind of grinned, and she says, but he bought me a washing machine. It was so beautiful. It was like. Yes, the whole idea is going to work. It, it's going to, it, it's, 
it's just going to make it. Um, it was it was just the perfect um, uh, solution to this exhibition. So with her wonderful story and this great stone, we were we knew we were off on our process to a great concept, a great idea. And over the process of a couple years, uh, several people or a number of people went off and did an, uh, these interviews, interviewing quite a few people on Maui, um, generally families or individuals from family. And after, you know, maybe an hour or two hours of talking, they would finally come you know, we could sort of see a thread of something and we could say, okay, but is there something that sort of give, that expresses what you have just told us? Is there some object that if you had one thing you would want to pass on to the next generation, to your children or to your grandchildren, what would that object be? And how would it represent important family values or cultural values? Um, that you have, that you would like to pass on to the next generation. So this became kind of the, the, the concept or the, the context of this exhibition, of how the exhibition was going to go together.